All right, guys, welcome back to What Kind of Works. And today we have a really cool little sensor here. Now, I've been sitting on this for just a little while. And what this is, is it's an air quality dust sensor. And so that sounds kind of boring, but actually it's really useful. So if you live in a city or you're taking care of elderly people or anything like that, where air quality matters, this is a really useful thing to have. And what's even cooler, it's really easy to hook up. So basically the way that this sensor works is inside of this little metal box, we have a LED and we have a sensor. So what we do is we shine the LED and this little circle here is hollow, so air can freely pass through it. We shine the LED through this little hollow area where air can pass through. And on the other side, or maybe there's a mirror in there, there's a sensor that lets us pick up how much light uh, is reflected and how much light uh, passes straight through. So that's basically how this works. And it's really easy to set up. The code is really easy. So this should really be a fun, short little video for you guys here today. Yeah, so now that we have sort of a little introduction here, Let's get it wired up and take a look at the code and then we'll get to see what the air quality is like in my basement. All right guys, so to wire this up, it conveniently comes with this little connector here with broken out little hookup wires. So we plug that in and this sensor will run from 3.3 volts or maybe even down to 2.7 or something like that, all the way up to five volts. Now, today I'm going to use a Wemos D1 Mini to control this sensor and read it. So this runs on 3.3 volts, which means we need this to run on 3.3 volts. So you might think that you can just plug power and ground into the 3.3 volt and ground pins on here. And while that should work, for some reason when I'm trying to do it, or when I've tried to do it, uh, it kills the power on here. Maybe the regulator isn't powerful enough to run the ESP and this. In theory, this should only draw 20 milliamps, so I'm not sure why that doesn't work, but whatever the case may be, uh, we're going to have to have some kind of something in between. So what I have for that is this little regulator that I built here, and this is using an HT7333 regulator and a big capacitor because I just had this already put together. Uh, if you're curious about this, I do have a nice little video talking about how to build these little regulators with a couple capacitors and everything. Now you might wonder, well, if this can run on five volts, why not just power it off of the five volt rail to begin with? The reason for that is the ESP here, the Wemos D1 Mini, uh, the analog input pin only tolerates 3.3 volts. So if we power this with 5 volts, our analog output will go up to 5 volts, which will not be good for our module here. So that's why we have the regulator. So the way that we wire this up, let's start with the regulator to the ESP. We're going to run 5 volts into the center line, and then the left little line here, this will be ground. So... On, our, on my ESP, I'll plug that into five volts and then into ground, just like that. So there's power to the regulator. Now on here, red and black are po power and ground. So we will plug power into the right side there. So that's the regulated output. And then ground black will go to the ground pin that connects to the ESP. So there we go. We got power all wired up. And now we have, you'll notice, two more wires left. So this sensor is not quite straightforward in just reading the analog output. Remember, there's a little LED in here. So when this is running, we, we at least shouldn't. I don't know if it's impossible, but you shouldn't run that LED continuously and just take readings. So there's a separate pin broken out on here. It is called ILED and it is this yellow wire. And this yellow wire, we're going to just connect straight up to D1, digital input output one. 
which leaves us one last wire, which is the blue wire. And the blue wire is our analog output. So we will put that on a zero. And there we go. Now, clearly it's not the most pretty wiring job here, but it is pretty simple at least. So now that we have this wired up, let's uh, go and take a look at the code and then we'll be able to see uh, the air quality in here. All right guys, so here's the code and it's only really about 80 lines of code, uh, including the comments. So honestly, this time it actually is pretty short. So up at the top, we have a couple of libraries we're including. Of course, we're using ESP Helper and Metro. You guys know I love that. And then we have this WaveShare Sharp Dust Sensor H. That is the library that I found that lets us uh, basically take readings and uh, modify the data into usable uh, particle counts, which is pretty cool. So I will note, this is not my library. However, I did have to modify it a little bit in order to make it usable on the ESP. Uh, basically, I changed it to assume 3.3 uh, volts instead of five volts. So I will include a link to this library from my GitHub repository, uh, but just know I didn't write it. I give full credit to whoever did write it. So coming down, we have a couple macros for time. I love to have those little macros there. It makes, you know, timing things out a lot easier. And then we have ESP helper setup. So you guys have seen this, you know what that's all about. And coming down into some of the other variables here, we have a topic that we're gonna post to. So I'm posting to slash home slash dust, though you can change that to be whatever you want. Here are our pin definitions. So again, the LED is going to be on D1 and the input pin is a zero. And then we create an instance of the wave share sensor and create a timer Basically, I want to post to MQTT once every 10 seconds, so this timer will just make that easy. Coming down to setup, we start the serial line. I always find that useful for debugging. Wait a little bit and then set up our pins and print out that we're starting up uh, while ESP Helper starts up and gets connected to everything and print out when we're finished. Pretty simple so far, right guys? All right. In loop, we have basically have one if statement and everything happens in there. So if we're connected to Wi-Fi and MQTT, it's a little bit pointless for us to take readings if we're not connected to anything where we can share that data. And the timer has gone off. So again, once every 10 seconds, we're going to start the process of taking a reading. To take a reading, what we do is we turn on that little LED inside of the sensor, wait a little bit of time, so specifically 280 microseconds, take a uh, analog digital reading, and then turn off the LED. So that's the process for taking a reading. Coming down here, this, these are the two lines that really kind of conjigger that data into something useful. So we take our analog value that we read and we run, run it through a little filtering algorithm that's part of that library. And then in order to get the density, which is in micrograms per meter cubed, we run this little conversion uh, function here, and that just will give us our density. So then we just print that out to the serial line. Again, always nice to have some debugging and post it to MQTT. So honestly, that, that's all this is. It's a really nice short program and you guys can modify it in, you know, put it into your own projects. Uh, I've tried to kind of scale it back to be nice and simple for you guys. All right, so now that we've seen how that all works, let's check it out and see it running in real time. So right before we check out the sensor in action, you may have noticed some cool tracking shots at the start of this video. For the past couple weeks, I've been working on a project to make a desktop dolly for shots like those and for time-lapsing builds for larger projects and stuff like that. The reason I bring this up is because I've documented 
quite a bit of my process in building that dolly and I'm going to be posting it as a behind the scenes project for my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see that build and other behind the scenes stuff from It Kinda Works, definitely go and check out the It Kinda Works Patreon page at patreon.com slash it kinda works. All right, now let's get back to this cool little sensor. All right, so here you can see I've got the sensor all powered up and on the computer there, you can see the real-time graphing data every 10 seconds. Uh, and you will note that I do have the unit set up to be micrograms per meter squared. So you can actually see, you'll note that it kind of has this climb at the beginning. I'm not entirely sure why, maybe the sensor needs to warm up or something, but it always starts out low and then climbs to a fairly steady state value. Uh, just a weird little quirk of the sensor. And we can see it's at about 120, which uh, according to the sensor's data sheet, not very good air quality, but not terrible down here in the basement. And as a test of this sensor, what I have is a little piece of cardboard here and I'm gonna light that up and then blow it out and just kind of try to get smoke over to the sensor. And we'll see uh, if we get any surprising changes in the graph. All right, so I got a little flame on there. Let that burn for a moment. And now try to get that smoke as close as we can to going inside of the sensor. Oh wow, look at that. That is a nice big spike and change in the sensor's reading. So that's really cool. We can see in real time, the uh, air quality in the basement here changed just from a little bit of smoke coming off of this cardboard. That's really cool. So anyway, guys, this is a really cool little sensor. And uh, I hope to maybe install this, uh, maybe a couple of these around the house just because, you know, I, I was looking earlier and upstairs is not nearly as bad as down here as somewhere in the 60s to 70s. Uh, and I think it's really cool. So if you guys like this video, definitely get subscribed to the channel. And if you need any help with the sensor or anything else, go to itkindaworks.com forum. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.